the many names that the Creator has bestowed upon us, the many expressions. Some call him Jesus, some call him Yah, some call him Jah, some call him Allah, some call him Jehovah. But we know all of us represent in some way an expression of the one God. As African people, we make no qualms about that. There's only one. All right? Expressed in many ways. Moment of silence for three people that stand out in this particular week that leads up to this very hour that we're standing here. Tuesday, February the 21st, which we just passed, was the original day we were supposed to host this. That was in honor of the 37-year anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X. 47, I'm sorry. 47 years since our big brother Malcolm X was assassinated at the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem, New York. We know what Malcolm went through in the eighth grade, seventh grade, one of his teachers told him when he said, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an attorney. His white teacher told him, Malcolm, you don't want to do that. You're good with your hands. Your own people won't come to you. We know Malcolm was discouraged at that moment, but what he became for most of us young black men was a premier example of scholarship, a true representation of uncompromising leadership for black people. So we can never leave out any form of uh, revering ancestry without calling on Malcolm's name. Yesterday, February the 22nd, 1929, the backdrop to most of the consciousness in this particular city, Trenton, New Jersey, most of you who grew up in the area of Passaic Street, they used to call it God's Avenue. And Dolly Holmes, where I grew up at, we used to call it Divine Land. And most of y'all, who y'all say, yeah, I'm going to get something to eat, I'm going to get, what's the word? Most of y'all would say, yeah, what's the hour? People walking around saying, peace. I'm going to get some nourishment. People saying, uh, you know, uh, what's up with the cypher? Peace, queen. What's going on, son? All of that vernacular came from one man that gave birth to what is called the 5% nation of God's nerve. That's my spiritual development. If you have a cell phone, please put it on vibrate. We'll turn it off. There's nothing more important right now, unless it's an emergency, than seeing these babies be beautiful as they are. And that person is known as Father Allah, known to many in the Nation of Islam as Clarence 13X, as yesterday, February 22nd. And today, another premier example, February the 23rd, we know the scholarship that this man represented. Though he had, at one time, a very anti- just an anti view of what the red, black, and green represents. W.E.B. Du Bois, a lot of his history is entrenched in <laughs> the quote unquote terminology that we use as sellout. A lot of his first history is entrenched in what would be considered the Negro sellout, or that talented tenth of the 1920s and 30s. But until he, like most of us should do, was able to learn to connect those, uh, connect the dots of what African centered culture really means and self-determination really means, he was really going against Marcus Garvey when he brought this to us, W.E.B. Du Bois. Him and Garvey used to fight tooth and nail about the ideals of self-determination, going back to Africa, nationhood. Later on in his life, when he connected those dots, he said, you know what? Garvey was right. This is already after Garvey had been ran out of this country, back to Jamaica and died basically a recluse you know, in Jamaica. But what W.E.B. Du Bois did is said, you know what? Garvey always told us to go back to Africa, and he never made it. He made sure that Marcus Garvey's body was taken to Africa and buried in the mother and fatherland. And W.E.B. Du Bois is also buried in Accra, Ghana. So those particular points of our history family should let us understand, to, to make us understand Though we are at one point of our conscious development right now, never stop learning. Never stop you know, attempting to mature in your knowledge and your consciousness because pretty soon we all gonna find out what the truth is, though it may hurt, though it's painful, going from one stage of your development to another stage of development. We all need to grow in our consciousness. Stop being complacent knowing that your child can't read in the 12th grade. Stop being complacent with that. Don't, don't let that slide, okay?